And we welcome Sylacauga Mayor Jim Heigel this morning. He had to have one more sip of coffee after a busy day yesterday, and it's been a busy time as they're getting the budget ready for 2018. Mayor, good morning. Thanks for coming. Well, thank you, Jim. I appreciate you oh, having man, me. Man, it's an honor to have you. And talk a little bit about uh, yesterday's meeting and, and what has been accomplished in uh, days and weeks and months gone by to help our city. Well, the big day was uh, Monday when we went up to Birmingham. Uh, with uh, Piper Jeffries, who is the uh, sole underwriter of our bonds and everything, and the bank notes that we applied for, 7.7 .7 million. We signed off all that Monday, and it, everybody just worked together so efficiently, it was very simple. <laughs> and uh, so we got the money, it's all, we'll take a couple of days to get all the, all the insurance papers, all been signed to cover any uh, shortfalls that we may run into. And also yesterday we went in at uh, 3.30 for the budget meeting. Our budget is uh, eight and a half by 17 inch pad with 22 pages on it. We went through it. This is the second time the council went through it. And we're well satisfied with the way our expenditures are going. We are very conservative. Yolanda Burns, our, one of our financial officers, she has been very, very meticulous mm -hmm. and very, very conservative with our monies. You were on councils previously. Uh, uh, and five years ago, yeah, five four years, years ago, yeah. yeah. And uh, when you were elected uh, as mayor, and uh, your council was seated, all new council. Yes. And mm -hmm. uh, when you begin to look at these numbers, all we have heard uh, in the public eye is our city is in dire straits. How did we come up with this money? <laughs> The only thing I can tell you what I left the council with when I left as mayor in 2012, which had a surplus, we had uh, five-year bonds that we uh, refurbished at a lower interest rate because after the, they were bought before the 2008 national uh, drop in the economy, you know, and it took us almost two mm -hmm. years. We cut everything 10 percent, got billed all the way up to 2012. We put uh, refurbished these uh, or uh, renewed these bonds at. At that time, they were about, uh, I think, about 12%. We oh got them goodness. all the way down to about four. And we were able to put $3 million in the kitty. We had it there. We always started uh, paving projects at that time in 2012 in SLAM. And uh, we got the worst roads in Sylacauga, part of Main Avenue, uh, I think Cloverdale and Fairmonts and those worst roads and then subdivisions and all that. And there's still a couple thousand, but. Uh, you really got to plan ahead. I mean, you can't say, well, I want this and go out here and, because there's over $2 million still in there, not counting the $450,000 that we left in excess uh, revenue from taxes and fees and permits. But it, it all depends. You got to, you got to look at the numbers. You got to, you can't just go out and say, I don't want this, you know, go out and do this and hire an engineering company to look at it. Well, that ain't going to work. Hire another engineering company to do this. It, you're wasting money. You got to be focused. You got to look ahead. And thank God we've got a council and a council president that looks at the numbers very much. They look at the numbers. That's where we're at today. You, you mentioned the streets. Oh, yeah. uh, they're in dire straits today. And, and they're not just one or two streets. There's a lot of them. Oh, oh, no. So how is some of this money going to help us with uh, repaving our streets? Well, at least the first five million will probably go into the street paving. Uh, subdivisions and... Uh, lower immediate income areas, we can match that with the 80-20 uh, bonds. We can get bonds for those. Uh, I've, we're trying to get some help from LDOT and uh, TAP Grants looking at uh, Fort Williams, but that's going to have to come out of pocket, and that'll probably be about a $340,000 project. But we've got the money to do it with. And we got lower interest rates. Uh, we went from a four point, what was it, uh, interest rates uh, went from 4.1 down to 3.2. That's, that's saving money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's money we're saving, yeah. and that's money can go for the future of our city, mm -hmm. go for our infrastructure, mm -hmm. and go for our roads, and go for our buildings. city owns several buildings in here that have to be maintained. So you talk about maybe the first $5 million uh, for streets. Yeah. Uh, that can cover quite a bit of streets, can it not? It can. It can. We've got 11 streets. Every street in this town has already been evaluated. Mm -hmm. We evaluated the streets back in 2011 when we first started that project paving there. We had everyone evaluate A, B, and C, which one was first, second, third for the first year, the second year, and third year. And, uh, but we've got them all laid out. Uh, we've got the Fort Williams on top. We've got Main Avenue. We've got 4th Street. I was hoping to get 4th Street widened, but uh, from what the engineers tell us, that's not quite feasible for different reasons. 
We went to one thing else we did, we went to the utilities board. We had an opportunity to get a grant. We're looking at Main Avenue, 8040 grant. Utility board, we're going to pave this road. You've got a lot of your gas is out of the road. You run it down the side. It's no longer mm -hmm. in the streets. Please look at your water and your sewer and see if you want to piggyback with this on this grant. And they looked at it and everything else. And the uh, sewer wasn't, uh, even though it was old, it wasn't the issue that water would be, because water would be the one where they dig up, you know, and replace the old uh, galvanized piping. But we're working with the utility board on these, so they know ahead of time what we're planning on doing. Now, uh, Fort Williams. Uh, how far would that run on Fort Williams? All the way through Alabama Avenue. Uh, not Alabama, but the, uh, Avondale Avenue. Okay. All the okay. way through the intersection. Okay. Uh, you expect that to start in 18? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We've got to push for that. It, it needs it. The, the retailers through that area need it. It's, uh, we've got 18 wheelers. 18 wheelers are not supposed to be down there unless they're delivering, but they slip through every once yeah. in a while. Yeah. But it is in bad shape. I know when Ollie's opened up, I was talking to the uh, contractor down there. And we went up to uh, <clears throat> Birmingham, uh, up to Talladega, to the court, you know, to make sure everything was right, just like we had to do with Hutton. And uh, uh, that's one of the first things when I met the gentleman up there. He says, uh, what are your plans for Fort Williams? I said, <laughs> I said, well, you beat me to it, but I was going to tell you, we're going to get that thing ground down and get it leveled off and get it remarked right, <laughs> you know. Now, you're actually table. talking, I think you told me, or, or uh, uh, Council President Pearman told me, that you're thinking about digging all the way down. Oh, yeah. Well, I would say all the way. That depends on the engineers. Okay. They know how far to dig. Yeah. But uh, they'll probably do basically what they did when the state came through here and did uh, Broadway. Mm -hmm. They'll take this whole lane out all the way up. Mm -hmm. They'll come back and do that, and it'll be grutted, you know. You'll have one lane open while yeah, they do the other? Yeah, all the time. That way you'll have yeah. at least two open because yeah. you've got three lanes there anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. You, so. All right. Uh, Silicaga Mayor Jim Heigl joins us this morning, and uh, a lot of excitement in our city and and uh, this council and and uh, council president and mayor working together to uh, help the city of Silicaga. And a lot of these things, long time coming. The infrastructure has been a concern of yours for a long time. Oh, absolutely. Well, everything we're doing now, Jimmy Dale, I've campaigned on this. Mm -hmm. I like the garbage. I campaigned on that. We got that out of the way. Now we're not losing that subsidy anymore. Mm -hmm. We're able to retain that. And there's growth. Uh, we're seeing growth uh, in sales tax. We're seeing growth for the whole year, really, a little bit of growth for the whole year. And all this is starting to build up. You talked about uh, the budget for 2018, mm -hmm. uh, and it looks to be finalized before October 1, or oh, by yeah, October yes, 1. A, I think everything that was on there, except for tweaking a few figures, what mm -hmm. uh, Yolanda will do, our uh, finance officer, she will tweak those numbers and everything else. And, and I, they'll have it ready by the first meeting in October, and I'm sure that the council will pass it. Uh, one thing that jumps off the page that a lot of people, including me, is a 5% uh, pay raise for the city employees. That's in the budget. It's in the budget, it is. Now, that's <clears> got <throat> to encourage people, uh, to encourage the city well, employees. Well, they haven't had a, mm -hmm. a cost of living or adjustment in a good many years. I forget exactly how far back. I think we gave them one. I, I'd be guessing somewhere back in 2010, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. Now, the police departments and the fire departments, uh, we're uh, below numbers that we'd like to have. How is this going to help us? That's going to, well, the police department, uh, just about everybody's going to be pretty well level funded. Uh, police department just needed one uh, tag uh, machine for mm -hmm. uh, identification mm -hmm. tags. Well, I said, why should we just budget the police? Why not this department here, this department here, and here is going to have to use it too? So I'll just take all these departments and let them help pay for it too, you know. It's just, uh, and it came out a lot easier on everybody. Uh, we got, we're putting in for uh, four temporary part-time police officers, mm -hmm. which are needed. Uh, matter of fact, we got a meeting with the uh, Civil Service Board this afternoon at 3.30, you know, concerning this issue. I, got, I haven't been involved with it that deep, but we'll find out this afternoon. And also, uh, uh, street department. Uh, at one time, uh, they have lost approximately six people since the first contract with Waste Pro. Mm -hmm. uh, we're getting four of those uh, positions back. The council's approved that. What so, about our fire department? Fire department, uh, we have some issues there. We, uh, uh, we need a fire chief. Back. Somebody told me you was going to take the fire chief's job. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might as well. <laughs> no, but uh, Adam Gardner's done a wonderful job with it, but our overtime is out the roof. We've got to get control of this. It seems like every time you get a 
fire chief, you know, this one does it this way, this one does it this way. We need to stay. This is what your responsibilities are. Stick with this, you know. Mm -hmm. Don't go reaching out here because you want something. You know, get what you need and let us get on our feet and then let us move forward. Uh, one of the most exciting projects that's come to Silicon in a while is our new shopping complex out here on 280. It is, and that thing's been just like a Coming magnet. Coming up, isn't it? Yeah, it has. It's like a magnet. People are getting calls and everything. We got people say, hey, what y'all doing in Silicon? And I say, well, we've got uh, TJ Maxx and uh, uh, Chick-fil-A coming, you know, and Hobby Lobby. Hey, so now they're starting to look at areas around here wanting to move into mm -hmm. them because it's going to draw a lot of traffic. Uh, when do we expect that shopping complex to April. be complete? Possibly April of next mm -hmm. year. Some okay. of it may be open a little bit earlier than that, but either the end of the first or into the second quarter of next year. Would it be fair to assume that most or all of the store uh, properties would be filled? Uh, at this time, no. There's four units that are still available. Of course, I haven't talked to anybody from Hutton in, in uh, several weeks, mm -hmm. but uh, the, those things change, you know. Uh, they may already have somebody uh, looking at them. But one interesting thing, we went down to... Uh, Alex City meet with LDOT mm -hmm. on the lighting down there. And what LDOT tells us is that we're going to have the state of the arts in lighting, traffic control, down 280. They said all the way from the top of Fort Williams all the way to Childersburg. Wow. And they said that people will come around just to see your traffic lights. And I said, I hope they're LED for they won't cost us too much. <laughs> But that's what we're really pushing for, just like was mentioned in the uh, meeting last night, uh, yesterday afternoon, you know, we're going to have to make some changes in the uh, lighting and everything. We need to go to the LEDs. When we look at these contracts, we don't want you to put light bulbs in. We want the state of the art in there because they're cheaper, they're run, and they last a heck of a lot longer. And uh, we had a couple of things. We had uh, uh, a project that was approved, you know, a previous council. We got to pick up on that, and that money wasn't there at the time, so we got to supplement for that, you know. But it's not hurting us. We're, we're still growing. We still got the revenue coming in. Now that light that's going to be the traffic light is going to be installed. Uh, uh, when will that be done? Any idea? Well, LDOT will do that. They're coordinating with Hutton to do that whenever they put that new road in. Okay. That's where it will be located at. And speaking of traffic lights, uh, those of you who uh, drive through uh, uh, East uh, Fort Williams and also Main Avenue, that will become a four-way stop. The lights on that intersection have been given a problem for some time, mm -hmm. that they're old type, mechanical type of lights, and they're highly expensive to maintain. There were uh, two, four, six, eight lights in there, two on each side, and, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and turn that into a four-way stop. That way you won't have to sit there and wait 30, 40 minutes, you know, or seconds, you know. Will but that be this fall? It's in the process now. Everybody will be warned about it. The new stop uh, lights will be up. They will have a red light up there flashing mm -hmm. to let you know it is a four-way stop. Uh, it will expedite the traffic through there a little bit quicker. With the excitement that we have, uh, not just in Sylacauga, but surrounding areas about what's happening in Sylacauga, take a look at the downtown area and your thoughts there. We're already looking at downtown area. We're pushing hard with the Planning Commission to get loft apartments. Uh, uh, people down there have buildings that can uh, su support the loft apartments, you know. Well, like you look at the one that uh, uh, oh, uh, Staten's building, mm -hmm. uh, that's going to be apartments upstairs. There's going to be business downstairs. This is going to be more revenue for people. And there's several buildings down there. It's not only just downtown, but any area in the uh, B2 mm -hmm. area can, or B1 or B2 areas can have loft apartments. And we're pushing that through, and the council's uh, well aware of it. Uh, we do have some people who are we're going to be working a little bit closer to the CDA, the Commercial Development Authority. Uh, we've got some board appointments that are coming up on that, and we really want to work with them as closely mm -hmm. as we possibly can to open up the downtown area. What, what would you say to people who are watching this morning that, that are, are residents of Sylacauga, or, or maybe people outside of Sylacauga that maybe want to look at annexing into our city? Now's a great time to do it. Yeah, it would be a great time for them to do it, but we're going to be very cautious in that respect. Now, we, uh, we're going to stay. We're going to try to fill in the gaps. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got somebody out there in Papertown Road that's in the city limits. That, that's a little bit it's far. It's a pretty good stretch, isn't it? Yeah, a good stretch. But uh, I laid out the new form for us in each department, in which it affects the police department, the fire department, the school system, and all that. All this is, is on one sheet where they can all see what it is and make sure that we can give them the service. We will, like Sycamore, we've got uh, not quite half of Sycamore is annexed into the mm -hmm. city, and that'll come. 
we've had plans for uh, working with them up there. We've even the Avondale properties that we have, you know, we're looking at cleaning them up. They need to be opened up where people can see it because people may want to come in there and uh, want to develop something, if not uh, for recreational purposes. Right now, the Planning Commission has designated all Avondale properties that we have acquired mm -hmm. or purchased as uh, recreational, for recreational purposes, but that ordinance, that can be changed. Sylacauga Mayor Jim Heigel, our guest this morning. Exciting time to be in Sylacauga. Mayor Heigel, thanks for coming by this morning. Well, it's my pleasure. I appreciate the invitation. No, you're more than welcome. We've got more Daybreak here at the top of the hour right after this timeout. <laughs>